Good Wednesday morning. Feature flags kind of allows us to beta test parts of our system. It's a technique where we hide parts of our functionality behind a so-called feature flag. And this allows us to roll it out to a subset of users in a gradual manner. I am your host, MPJ, and you are watching Fun Fun Function. I apologize for the mess in my studio. These are, this is furniture uh, and some, some blinds and some spotlights and it's, it's gonna be pretty eventually, just bear with me. All right, let me tell you what we're going to do today. First, I'm going to build an app. Then I'm going to introduce a new feature to that app. Then I'm going to hide that feature behind a feature flag. First, we're going to implement our own feature flagging system just using a database. Uh, and we're going to then talk a little bit about the challenges and limitations of that. And then as a last step, we're going to migrate our custom database feature flagging system to using LaunchDarkly and talk a little bit about the benefits of doing that. LaunchDarkly, by the way, is a software as a service tool to do feature flagging and they are the sponsors of this episode. So thank you so much, Launch Darkly, for supporting the show. I am skeptical. Uh, do we really need feature flags? Fair enough. Let's try just building an app uh, and adding a feature and then thinking a little bit about what we just did. Okay, let's get started. Um, first thing that we need, uh, we're going to create... <laughs> we go... We My god! We are going to create a React app. And to do that, uh, there is a very nice little boilerplate creator called uh, Create React App. So we just installed a Create, cre create, create React App. Uh, and that installs this little tool. Uh, this is going to create a boilerplate app for us. Really, really handy. Uh, hang on. Um, so we just do create. React app, and we're going to call this playlist app because we're going to play around with, well, you'll get it soon enough. So many modules. Modules, 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 modules. Cool, now we go CD, playlist app, and then npm start. And there we go. Let me open up a new tab and go start Visual Studio code here. Because we are going to do some coding. All right, let's change some text here to make sure that everything works. I'm gonna remove this header here. Did it disappear? Oh, library loading, nice. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build a playlist app. A very, very simple, shitty playlist app. Uh, doesn't do much, it just lists. Uh, a few songs that are hard coded and it also gives us the ability to sort those songs uh, uh, in, in different orders using sorting options. Let's go! Okay, break. Right, let me show you what I did. Uh, this is a standard React app. This is how they look. Uh, if you haven't seen React before, don't worry about it. Uh, React works like this. You, uh, you create have this constructor where you set the state, the initial state in the constructor, and then you set like these songs to be empty. And uh, every time you change the state, this render function will run and it will uh, render the state here. So you see here that it will go over the songs and will map them and then in in place here it's going to render these li elements with the song name and uh, as you see here if i refresh europe 
takes a little while for them to appear because I have this set timeout here uh, where I uh, simulate some loading uh, and uh, I set the state to the song. So whenever this state, state is updated, these, these are updated as, uh, as well. So basically it just renders some hard-coded songs, these. It doesn't do any ordering yet or anything like that. It just pulls them out in the order that I've, I've added here. Now I'm going to add a loading state, I think, and some sorting mechanics. Let's go! Alright, so let me walk you through what we did here. I have made the code really tiny uh, so that you can see it all in one place. I'm sorry if that makes it hard for you people on mobile devices. You have to hold it close, I suppose. Alright, so as you see here, I added a little bit of loading action there. Uh, and then uh, that works in the, by having this loaded attribute here and set that to true once we set the state and that determines if this div is uh, it's going to show this loading div here or if it's going to render the songs. Uh, the songs now have this uh, sort order property and we set that uh, on the click of these buttons. So we set state order sort order manual, set state sort order date added. And whenever we do that, uh, render is called again because set state triggers a new render. And here we find this, we create this variable here called sorted songs. And uh, if the sort order is manual, we don't care. We just return the, the songs from the database. And then we, uh, otherwise we return the songs by uh, first slicing them because if we call sort immediately, that causes an in place sort of the array, which is a crazy JavaScript behavior. like. Who who thought that was a good idea? Um, I I suppose it's for performance reasons, but it still makes ah uh, oh whatever. That's just me ranting. Sort uh, it just sorts by uh, parsing the, uh, the the added date here, like these strings, uh, and then uh, it reverses it because we want the newest first. And that's it. So if I click here on sort by date added, the last added uh, becomes. On the top, you see here, oh, this is added the 3rd of December. This is added in November. So Raver goes on top. Or if I go manual, the only one, the first one goes on top here. And that's the entirety of the app. Now, some of you might know that I used to work at Spotify. And when you tell people that you work, work at Spotify, or even that you worked at Spotify, people tend to just give you feature requests. And uh, one thing that people often talk about is that whenever you have a playlist, uh, you when you add something to a playlist in Spotify, it ends up at the bottom. That's just how it, it is designed because the analogy for a playlist is kind of like a mixtape. You keep adding songs and like the order of a playlist is very important. However, a lot of people also use playlists as kind of, you know, collection buckets, you know, like, oh, I have found this new interesting song that is a you know, an electro swing song or something like that. I'll add it to my electro swing playlist. And it's it's kind of like, it's not meant to be a cohesive playlist that you send to your loved one. It's just a dump of songs. And in that case, you really don't want them to have a manual order. You, you actually want the songs to end up on top of the playlist. And so you want the default order to be a date added. Uh, so let's say that we were Spotify and we had a, a playlist playlist app and we wanted to try to see if perhaps users responded better uh, if the default sort order was uh, date added so that new songs ended up on top and manual order was like not the default. That was just something that other people used. So like. We, we want to change the default here. That's the change that we want to introduce to our system. So let's imagine that this was our app. It's deployed in all its glory, super nicely styled, and we want to change this default sort order. 
Well, how do we do that? We could, you know, just go here and we change the sort order to date edit. Boom. And now River is on top when we refresh the page. And we deploy that and out it goes to all users. And we are done. Okay, hang on. I think I kind of start, I'm kind of starting to see why you might need feature flags. 